Hi, I'm Ed Merrison from Selahan, and once again we're in Chardonnay territory today. In fact, we're going straight to the purest heart of the matter, to Chablis. And this is the wine that's going to take us there. It is the 2018 Louis Michel Chablis. This one is available here in Australia under screw cap and it'll set you back about $64. Now, because I bloody adore Chablis and may well get a little carried away here, I'm going to call forth a couple of expert witnesses early, Your Honour. So first up, Rajat Parr and Jordan Mackay, authors of the book The Sommelier's Atlas of Taste. Now, they write that Louis Michel's holdings are phenomenal and add that this is, quote, the sashimi of Chablis, pure, clean, elemental. Never any oak, this is as energetic and pure as Chablis can get. The wines are steely and bright when young, but age gorgeously for years and decades. And next to the stand, if I may, William Kelly. Now, he's the Burgundy specialist at the Wine Advocate. This is what he has to say. Intense and tensile wines are the calling card here, pure and unadorned by style and consistently high in quality. Indeed, I sometimes think that Louis Michel is the most underrated of Chablis' great domains. So now we've got that evidence in, whereabouts are we? Well, we're about 200 kilometres southeast of Paris in the northernmost wine growing area of Burgundy. The region covers about 5,400 hectares of exclusively Chardonnay vines, centred on the town of Chablis, but spreading to 19 villages and hamlets thereabouts. The climate here is considered semi-continental, with long, hard winters and summers that are usually, but not always, fairly hot. Hail and especially frost are constant climatic threats that have led to huge fluctuation in grape levels and therefore prices. So Chablis accounts for just 0.3% of French wine production, which may lead you to wonder, it's made it so famous. Well, it's singular and distinctive. There is a lot of great Chardonnay on this planet, but Chablis has a character all its own. Its defining features, in the words of the Oxford Companion to Wine, are its, quote, unique streak of steely acidity, a firm flintiness and a mineral quality not found elsewhere in Burgundy. So both climate and geology play a part here. Climate, since we're in France's most northerly, hence coolest areas for still wines from Chardonnay. North of here, of course, the grape is used to great effect in champagne production. And geology, because this is all about clay limestone soils shot through with tiny fossilized oyster shells formed some 150 million years ago during the Upper Jurassic period. Kimmeridgian limestone is the name given to the most prized soils. The next layer is known as Portlandian limestone. That's of similar structure, but not felt quite to lend the wines the same degree of finesse. So we have a pretty neat Appalachian hierarchy here, a four level pyramid. At the base of that pyramid is Putty Chablis. This makes up just 18% of production and may be produced anywhere within the delimited area of the Chablis wine growing district. However, those parts of the Appalachian that apply solely to this, the lowliest designation, are based more on those Portlandian rather than Kimmeridgian soils. So Kimmeridgian soils then are the key from here on up. So next you have the Appalachian Chablis, which this is. Now, even though this is a theoretical step up from Putty Chablis, you have to also consider that this accounts for 65% of production. Now that means quality can vary, so you'll want to keep track of some specific producers like Louis Michel. Now next up we have the Premier Cru, which make up 15% of Chablis production. There are 40 so-called climat that to qualify for this. Now, now that word climat, that just denotes a named plot of vine growing land. Now these plots are located on both sides of the river Surin, which flows through Chablis. So and this producer, Louis Michel, releases wines bearing the name of seven of these premier cru. From the left bank of the Surin, it bottles Séché, Vaillant, Montmain, Bouteau and Forêt. And from the right bank, it has holdings in Voloran and Monte de Tonnerre. Now that brings us to the top of the pyramid, the Grand Cru. Now these exalted parcels make up just 2% of the region's wine. There are seven Grand Cru designated climat, and these actually form one single continuous band situated just to the northeast of the town of Chablis. The vines face southwest at altitudes of 100 to 250 metres along the right bank of the Surin. From northwest to southeast, the sites are Bucreux, Preuse, Vaudésir, Grenouille, Valmour, Les Clos and Blanchot. Now, of these, Louis Michel itself has holdings in Grenouille, Vaudésir, and Les Clos. So, as mentioned in the Sommelier's Atlas of Taste, this estate has phenomenal holdings. The family's wine-growing history goes back to the late 1600s, but they moved to Chablis and founded the domain in 1850. It now runs to 25 hectares, over all four levels of the pyramid. As I said, making three Grand Cru wines and seven Premier Cru. 
The current custodian here is the thoroughly charming Guillaume Michel. Now he's been working at the estate since 2006 and took charge in 2009. He has an English wife, a stereotypically sexy French accent and a lazy approach to actually making wine. And that last point sounds disparaging, but it's certainly not. It's a cliche that great wine is made in the vineyard, but here at Louis Michel, honestly, it's no empty claim. For those 25 hectares, Guillaume employs seven Yes, seven full-time vineyard workers. As he puts it, you need people out in the fields, especially when you farm organically in this climate. If you do a good job in the vineyards, when you harvest, that's 90% of the work taken care of already. Because in the cellar, Louis Michel is known for, what was it we said at the beginning? Pure, clean, elemental wines. So all fermentations here are spontaneous, i.e. no selective yeasts are added. Vinification and maturation is in stainless steel, and Guillaume keeps his mitts off the wine. 1970 was the first stainless steel vintage here. That's 50 years now since the wine saw some oak. And if you'll allow me to call one further witness, here's the Oxford Companion to wine again. Those who favor stainless steel want the purest flavor of Chablis with the firm streak of acidity and the mineral quality that the French describe as goût de pierre à fusil or gunflint. Louis Michel's is generally considered to be the epitome of this style. Okay, so probably time to have a quick look at the wine then. So on the nose, this is bright with some honeysuckle, mint, lemon zest and white stone fruit notes. There's an iodine character that is very typical here as well. Um, and there's also an all butter pastry suggestion that might call to mind that non-existent oak. And in the mouth, this is bone dry, of course, not quite medium bodied with good intensity of citrus and white peach juice. It's stony textured and there's also that telltale seaweed taste. It has lovely balance with a juiciness that leaves that acidity feeling firm but wet, not hard and dry. In fact, that finish is pristine, pure, long and reminiscent of ripe lemon flecked with salt flakes. That is pretty much textbook, a mouth-watering wine that, if you're like me, you can't get enough of. Very pure, very classic, a light yet focused and substantial. And as you move up into the Premier and Grand Cru, you'll expect to find that focus become even sharper, to see even more flashes of detail and to find a bit more flesh, weight and length. But that thread, that essence of Chablis, runs through the whole range. So for more on the wines of Domaine Louis Michel and any other grower in the Sellaham portfolio, please go to our website, that's www.sellaham.store, or feel free to send us a direct message at Sellaham Wine or to me at Van Merison. But in the meantime, please keep well, stay safe, drink responsibly and discerningly, and Chablis Lee, and thank you again for watching.